Today is an important day. It's the last day of the so-called comment period when Americans can officially register their opinions on the IRS's latest effort to suppress free speech. So far, nearly 100,000 comments have come through. 100,000. Nearly every one I've seen is opposed. Just to put things in perspective, that's basically the largest number of comments ever, ever, for a rule like this. Even the head of the IRS said he saw more comments on this proposal than ever before on any regulation. And that was 70,000 comments ago. 70,000 comments ago. The commissioner of IRS said this was the most comments he'd seen on any regulation. So people are surely making their voices heard and loudly. And the message they're broadcasting is pretty clear. Leave the First Amendment alone. Leave it alone. Get out of the censorship and harassment business. Stick to the job you're actually supposed to be doing. And let's be clear, the folks who are logging opinions like these run straight across the political spectrum. Labor unions are upset. Business organizations are upset. Civil liberties activists are upset. Taxpayer groups are upset. Grassroots groups right across the political map are upset as what they view as an assault on their First Amendment rights. And all you have to do is read their own words. One group of primarily left-leaning First Amendment advocates said the new regulation would, quote, impose serious burdens on free speech and hinder the democratic process it serves. An official with the ACLU described the IRS proposed regulation as creating, quote, the worst of all worlds, end quote. The proposal he wrote could seriously chill legitimate issue advocacy from nonprofits on both the right and the left, and would disproportionately affect small, poor nonprofits that cannot afford the legal counsel to guarantee compliance. And here's what one labor union had to say, quote, given the history of misuse and abuse of the IRS immense powers in the not so distant past, it is disappointing and disturbing that this fundamental principle has been forgotten and that this regulation is the IRS proposed response to its recent missteps. So left, right, center, folks understand what a threat this rule poses to the most cherished of civil liberties. They also realize that a group the administration favors today could easily become a group the IRS targets tomorrow. That's why this fight is so important, why it's so inappropriate to hand this kind of power to any administration. I don't care what party the president's in. And that's why I, along with several of my colleagues, recently sent a letter to the new commissioner of the IRS explaining in some detail just why the agency's proposal was such a bad idea, a terrible idea. In that letter, we also reminded the commissioner of something else, too. The ball's in his court on this one. The ball's in his court. He could stop this rule tomorrow. <clears throat> and given the comments he made about restoring integrity to the IRS when the Senate voted to confirm him, that's exactly what we expect out of him. In fact, that's a, the essentially the mandate on which he was confirmed. So here's the choice before him. This is the choice the commissioner of IRS has. He can either fulfill that mandate to the American people by restoring integrity to an agency that they no longer trust. He can be a hero and say no to those who are pressuring him to crack down on the First Amendment rights of ordinary citizens. That's what the IRS commissioner told Richard Nixon. He said, I'm not going to cooperate with your effort to target your enemies. Or he can serve political masters over in the White House. He can implement regulations that will erode our most fundamental civil liberties, regulations that would almost certainly lead to the harassment of conservative groups today and quite possibly the harassment of left-leaning groups in the future. 
In fact, a recent letter Representative Camp received from the Treasury Department appears to suggest that unions in particular have a lot to fear from this proposal. So look, now's the time to act. America's free speech advocates are standing up with one voice. Thousands upon thousands made their voices heard in the opinion process. Millions more, I suspect, are right there with them in spirit. Some who oppose this rule picked the president in the last election. Some voted for his opponent. Some may have even cast a ballot for another person entirely. But what unites us is our love of the liberties that have allowed Americans to disagree for centuries. Commissioner Koskinen, do the right thing. Stop this regulation. Now, Mr. President, on another issue, later today the Senate will vote on motions related to S-1982, a bill that was not considered in committee, greatly expands spending without any realistic offset, and would vastly overwhelm the Veterans Administration health care system. It's shameful that Senate Democrats would seek to score political points by rushing to the floor a bill the committee did not consider and could have otherwise been handled in a bipartisan manner through the regular order. Unfortunately, it's become standard practice around here for the majority to pursue partisan legislation in a sort of take it or leave it manner. So it's unsurprising that nobody other than the majority leader and the committee chairman have been allowed the opportunity to amend the bill. Senators on both sides have been shut out of the legislative process. Uh, for example, we can't even vote on the ranking members veterans amendment legislation I support it will not add to the deficit. I'm a co-sponsor of this legislation, which provides full COLA restoration for service members entering the military in 2014, provides advanced appropriations for VA mandatory accounts, improves services and benefits for victims of military sexual trauma, enhances benefits for survivors and dependents of deceased or disabled veterans, encourages the hiring of veterans, and unlike the Sanders bill, is fully paid for. Now, as for the Iran sanctions language in the Burr Amendment, as I noted yesterday, there is significant disagreement between the President and many members from both parties in both the House and the Senate concerning the best way to prevent Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon. The Iranian regime has carried out its best attempt at a charm offensive to forestall not only the implementation but the legislative consideration of even tougher sanctions should the regime fail to fulfill its commitments according to November's interim agreement. The interim agreement <clears throat> included a joint plan of action agreed to by Iran. According to that joint plan of action, the U.S. administration acting consistent with the respective roles of the President and the Congress will refrain from imposing new nuclear-related sanctions. The agreement is spelled out clearly to the Iranians. Acting consistent with our respective roles, the Iranians can read the plain language and understand that this Congress did not agree to renounce additional sanctions. We didn't agree to do that. Yet the majority leader is determined not to allow a single vote on the Kirk Menendez bill, which could be fully debated by this body uh, prior to a vote. We'll not have that debate, apparently, nor will we vote on any amendments related to the bill before us. Mr. President, I yield the floor.